James in the building. Hey, how y'all doing? All right, my man, my man James. Well, again, thank you for coming on and sitting down with the lockout men. You you made a paragraph in the in a comment session up up under a video. I think it was the uh, young lady talking about uh, her her trials and tribulations with Warner, man. So uh, let's start right there. Yeah. She complained about getting terminated and everything. And, of course, I made a reaction video. In your comment, you came in and and uh, said what you said. So you're, are yeah. you with Warner now or you worked for Warner? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I've still, I've been with Warner since uh, October of 2020. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Let me go back and get that right. Um, yeah, of October of 2020. And I'm still with them now. I'm actually getting ready to go be a, become a trainer to, in an effort to make some money out here. Uh Warner is doing a lot of changes, and one of the changes that they've done, as you probably already know about, is uh, a lot of people are just being pretty much moved to team. Uh, if you, in fact, if you come to Warner now, uh, your only option is teaming. Uh, all for all these new students that are coming in. I've been a solo driver all these years for these past three years, but uh, now I'm just uh, either given a choice to team, find another account, or become a trainer. Uh, they've been asking me to do training for a couple of years, but I, I'm. I'm finally just going to go ahead and go do that instead. More money in that than teaming. But what is the bit push for them to to transition into teaming? What what happened? Well, I mean that's I mean well, I mean money. That's that's the reason. I mean they they can they can tell you all kinds of clever reasons better better than I can, but. At the end of the day, it's it's money. I mean, they get two guys on a truck. You got these new students coming out of school. You're paying them crap, to be honest. I mean, it's sucky pay to begin with. Probably pay, better pay they've ever had in their lives, but it's still truck driving goes. It's not that great a pay, and uh, you know, you get you, you only cuts one truck. You know, you know, doing the same job. Rain wins. Yeah, so they're, you know, they're getting, they're getting these people on the trucks, you know, the team, they can, they can drive and nonstop. And, it, you know, it's all about, they're making money, Warner's making money, they're paying, they're paying new drivers. They're paying new drivers more, less money than they would pay experienced drivers, obviously. So they're going to make quite a bit of money. Warner's going to make quite a bit of money that way. It's not necessarily a bad thing, but uh, for people like me, it is because I'm not real fond of teaming. So that's uh, a good question. Help. Like, what's what's going to happen with the drivers that that put in the time there? Like, like maybe five or six years, and they've been solo. Now the only choice is teaming or training. What 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 if they what if they decide? What if they decide not to go that route? Would yeah. would they still be given the opportunity to uh, remain solo with them, or would they just get kicked out? Well, no, I no, I, I couldn't say that they're kicking anyone out. I have no, no proof of that. Um, they, but I understand that. Uh, I mean, you had. I was told to either team, uh, become a trainer, or find an account that uh, is going to allow me to solo. And the, all the accounts out of my home. Uh, is not available. I mean, nothing that uh, nothing that I would want to do uh, solo would be out of my Florida current location. So a, a lot of a lot of accounts like the I think they have the uh, I want to get this right the Dollar General account that I guess you can do that solo that account plays quite quite a bit of money. But uh, I think the Home Depot account still you can still do solo. I, so you know it's just it's those accounts are. I'm not interested in. So uh, my 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 personal only option is really tra train our team. So uh, that that's that's you know that's that situation. Now as as for the for the girl in my comments, we can we can we can go over that if you want or whatever else you want to go over. But train or team, that's a hell of an ultimatum to to give a a driver that's been there for as long as you have like i've been driving well, I, i've been driving for nine years and if a company come to me and be like hey well we understand you drove for nine years and you gave us nine years of loyalty but 
only thing that we're going to have available for you now is is team or or training and if not right. find uh the other option which is which is what the 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 find something like a family dollar I, i'm not well I'm not yeah a fan. i mean I'm there's, not a there's fan several accounts dollars. yeah <laughs> yeah you know there's there's several, i agree i understand you know there's several accounts and there, i'm sure there may be some others that are uh available to solo driving I, I don't know what those are because i'm only shown like when i specifically search in the career uh opportunities app in my location it only gives me certain certain jobs that are open to that uh open to me at that from that location my home location but you know uh i don't know what they're doing you know warner has a lot you know a, a lot of million milers and then you know two million milers and I think there's like one five million miler, just like one guy. <laughs> but um, you know, so I, you know, I, I, I can't imagine what those guys think. I don't know what they're what they're doing um, or what's what options are being given to them. Uh, of course, I haven't I haven't talked to any of them, so I wouldn't know. But yeah, I mean, Warner has been making quite a bit of changes. I mean, they they recently, I guess maybe within a year or so, uh, have taken away all personal conveyance and. Well, that's that's not something I care too much about, but safe haven is something I care quite a bit about because there's been many times that I'm trapped at the at the shipper and I'm gonna run out of time because I've been sitting here on my 14 hour clock waiting six hours to get loaded and it still ain't happening, you know. So I got to get out of here, you know. Uh, you know, so taking away that safe haven is a is a big t- deal to a solo driver. Being that they took that so, away from you guys, they took it away of of you accessing it or you have to call safety now to access it well you know you you hit on the the mark here and i I said that exactly the same thing it's not very difficult to make safe haven a permission only you know uh uh, mode on the app on on my my tablet you know um, a driving status so you know i don't understand why you know you could just you know not say hey i need permission you get permission, and then you can drive in that in, in, in safe haven. But they've just taken it completely, all of it away, uh, for uh, because they claim people were abusing it, which I have no doubt. But nonetheless, that you know that doesn't change anything for me. So you know now, you know now now the the uh, basic concept is is now I I get to a uh, a shipper or whatever, and they they tell me to go pick up a load with three hours on my clock. Or should I say more more specifically, uh, three hours left on my 14 for a live load. I get down to an hour. I'm leaving. I'm going to disconnect from the trailer. Tell them, hey, you can load it, store it on your property, and I'll come back and get it tomorrow. Or I'm leaving now. You know, I don't have any choice. They don't. Uh, there's no. There's no other option for me. You know, uh, there's been times when I've had to because of that rule and Warner's other rules, such as uh, you know you can't park on an on ramp or uh, you have to you have to park in safe parking. So you know those are those are according to them. You know you park on an on ramp or whatever. You you can be fired for that as much as you can as that U turn in that video she was talking about. So you know you've uh, there's been many times where I've had four hours left on my clock, but my closest parking is pretty far away. Questionable if I'm going to make it. So I might have to shut down two three hours three hours early based on those rules. So you know well. I, so, I those, see those, those changes have made quite a bit of difference. I I see you 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 mentioned that that it's now included in the one and done situations the the U turns the oh yeah the the parking on the on the on ramp. Now as far as parking on the on ramp, I'm I'm not a fan of that either. You are nothing. Shao Kahn wins. Fatality. I try my damnedest not to park on an oil ramp. It's not like that I haven't parked on an oil ramp because I did of plenty of times, but recently my company stepped up to the plate and kind of restrict us from parking on oil ramps also. But we, right. we have... Mean- permission to get to a safe haven so that's the only difference right, here which is fantastic yes that's but good. we have a little bit of lenience but but the company that i do work for is very strict 
and they they do have right. very strict policies. But yeah. not as much as I, a I, one I, and done type of situation because we we do get into situations that that companies should understand. Like I understand about a U-turn, but if you can make a, a safe U-turn or a U-turn that is permitted, then I don't see why that why that should well, be a one and done situation. But I can understand if we make if we make a U-turn in the middle of a four lane highway or a U-turn in the middle of a four four lane traffic, then well, yes. Yes, that that should so, be yeah. Up I mean, for Warner, Warner, Warner uh, in my in my experience, Warner isn't like you know tyrannical about some of their rules. Now, especially you know when it comes to U turns, there's not there's no leeway. You know, if you you do a U turn at Warner, you're done, bro. I mean, it, it, it's you just just get, you should start packing now because it's going to happen. Example: a uh, friend of mine, he did he pulled into a no, he was. He got into a left-hand turning lane. He pulled into a parking lot and kind of in that parking lot, he just kind of, you know, got his tra full trailer in there. So you did that little turn and then turned right back out onto the road. The, the, I don't know how it was viewed by the company. I don't know if the computer sent it. Anyway, they did it. The guy, the, the safety guy was almost excited that he was thinking he was going to get to fire somebody over a U-turn. He's like, it's not a U-turn. I clearly pulled into another lot, turned around and came out. So I don't know what you're talking about. But, you know, it was certainly brought up to him as if he had did something wrong, which he clearly didn't. But, yeah, they don't, they have zero, zero tolerance for, for U-turns. And like she said in her video, she was instructed, well, by a, a guard. The guard don't own no C CDL, and he don't have no authority to tell you to do an illegal U-turn. She even said there was a sign there telling you not to do a U-turn. So, you know, what's it tell you? So, it tell, you know, I mean, it, it tells there's a, a lot. you know, yeah. I mean, again, like I said in, in my statement is, you know, yeah, you're a new driver, and the company knows you're a new driver, but they also, they don't really care about that. You're going where you're going it's pretty much you know they tell you to go you're going uh, so don't think you're not going into the snow because you're going uh you got a cdl you say you're a professional driver you're given the opportunity as a professional driver and they don't care you are you know your mistakes are your mistakes and i've made those mistakes myself as i mentioned in my my video you know i took out my mirror backing i called them said hey i smacked out my mirror they uh, they said how it happened i said well i wasn't paying attention clearly and broke my mirror and they replaced it and sent me on my way gave me a little 30-day probation or whatever they, they do and then you know for my own mistakes that's you know it's on you all you right know? we we're going to touch on that because you you did mention that in your comment as well but the, the rewind back you said the reason why you put about what you say about nine percent ten percent of your of your settlements in the bank why explain to us why well, why is that important well to well, to be yeah to be clear uh I, i'm a married man so i work for free i do this as a hobby all my money goes home and my wife pays the bills so i take nine percent of my paycheck and that goes to a separate account that my wife doesn't even have access to and that money is absolutely for savings it is for emergencies, for if you get fired, you got money to get home, just like which what happened to that woman. There's there's lots of reasons why that money is there, um, but you can't you can't be stranded out here with nothing. You know you you just can't. I mean I had credit cards, I'm trying to pay those off. I have money I'm trying to put off to the side, but you know you you gotta have you gotta have something to fall back on to to get you safely home. As as she explained, you know she got. She got terminated in Laredo. Well, they're not going to let her drive home, not with the truck anyway. So, you know, they give her a Greyhound bus. So you bus, I guess, you for thirty-seven dollars, you can go anywhere in the country on Greyhound. I guess at least that used to be the old commercial. But uh, yeah, so I mean, there's there's a lot of reasons to have money put aside. There's no reason not to be having put money aside. I mean, at nine percent, that's 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 ninety dollars per thousand. There's no reason you can't put that back per paycheck. You know, so. I agree. I totally agree with you. Yeah. And I'm I'm glad somebody else kind of explained that other than me, because I've been saying that for years. Well, I watch all these drivers. Well, I watch all these 
new drivers come on they make tiktok videos they make youtube videos they make facebook videos they come in facebook posts they come in asking for donations because they got they got kicked out the truck by their trainer they got fired by the company and now they can't get home and stuff like that i i've been saying that for years i i i right. was i i was terminated and i, I and i I, I would have been stranded if I didn't make the moves that I made. And from that point on, right. I've been stressing the fact that, hey, when, you, when you're when a company mm -hmm. driver, now if you're an owner-operator, that's different. You got your own truck. Right. That's different. I'm not, I'm not talking about y'all, so y'all can still listen, though. But for company drivers, for company drivers, I, I, I stress the fact. I, I stress the fact get a credit card you can get one now this is modern times you can get a you can right. get a credit card five hundred dollars yeah. or wait wait three three to five hundred dollars to already have on hand do not yeah, you pack, get approval for that in like five minutes do not pack the kitchen sink only come with the essentials i i've been stressing that right. for years so Still, there's still people, there's still drivers out here that's that's not taking the lockout men's advice. So the only thing you can do is just watch right. and pray and hope that they can get out of that situation. But but I I've been saying you that know, for the for the longest. All always come prepared. You know, and I, I'm not ridiculing her. I mean, everybody on the road is trying to get me fired. Everybody around me is trying to get me fired 24 hours a day. I feel exactly that way. Uh, so, you know, I got cars jumping in front of me, brake checking me. I got, you know, you know, you know the deal. So, you know, there's lots of reasons that a person can get terminated out here. And just because you did get terminated for a reason that isn't catastrophic, it doesn't mean you're a piece of garbage or anything. You know, just go get it, you know, take the L, go to another company apply what you learned but you know there's there's like i said there's a lot of reasons why you you know you can get terminated out of here now no warner's not going to fire you for a glad hand i can tell you that right now i mean that's that's not happening it's uh, it's that's it's ridiculous i mean like i said I've, I've snapped i've had one break in my hand while hooking up as i mentioned in the in the comment section so you know there's more there's more to that than than it may, may be now i had a uh, a fleet manager that she would call me and she would tell me uh, I had a really good, rep uh, good. Uh, uh, what do you want to call it? Repertoire. Uh, relationship. Yeah, yeah. With the, with the, with this fleet manager. So she would call me, and we'd end up talking for like fifteen, twenty minutes or whatever. But uh, she would tell me she would have to, you know, call these people and talk to them like children. Hey, you know, you got to get up. You got to go to work. You have to, you have to. There's a lot that that can be not being told in someone's story that is, you know. They 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 could have been half done with you for a long time ago, and finally they're just done with you now, you know, because you know they can't keep treating you like a child, uh, you know that these these people are out here like that. I, I recently, like I said, I was in Iowa, and I'm literally driving in the snowstorm, and they they're calling me while I'm driving, and I I answer on my headset, and they're like, oh hey, you know they talk to you like a child, hey I know the weather's really bad right now, but are you gonna deliver on time? But like what? Yeah, I don't understand why you're calling me. You know, it's just it's just weird, like how they how they sometimes they they try to call you and speak to you like a child. And I don't know if that's because they have drivers who literally act like children, and that's why they're treating people that way. I don't know, but I mean, my my manager doesn't treat me that way. Obviously, he acts like a like a normal person. But these are just a couple experiences that I've recently had. So micro managing is not yeah. my strong point. <laughs> I hate yeah. I I yeah. truly hate it. Yeah. Even though my company is like is like strict on that part, but yeah, you, you get with a fleet manager that knows how you run, they don't need to call you. Yeah, man. They yeah, they don't no, need to call I mean, you they because they like, know they know that you're gonna get the get the job done. Yeah. So yeah, my ten hours in one minute I'm not hitting my strong, not my strong suit. You at, at ten hours in one minute, I'm hitting pre trip. I'm already starting my day. I gotta go. Go, 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 go. That's that's you know, if you're that person, you're usually not gonna have, you know, any problems with them calling you and I micromanaging you and calling you, you know, telling you you gotta get out of bed or anything like that. But yeah, it's just examples that an example I've 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 had an experience with. But you know, one of one of the things that you know,
really should be aware of with Warner, and this is a mistake that I that I made um, when I came to Warner, is you know Warner Warner offers 401k, and they offer all the the, the bells and whistles that that a lot of people have, like you know healthcare plans and stuff like that. But when it comes to that 401k, you really need to read the fine print. So if you get the 401k with Warner, what you need to know is is they don't match anything your first year. You're just putting in money your second. The second year they add a percentage. The third year, they add a little bit more percentage. But most importantly, you can never take a dime out of that 401k unless it's some kind of a hardship or you quit. And if you quit before five years, they remove everything they contributed to your 401k. They take it all back, and you can leave with only what you contributed to it. So people need to be aware about that because it's kind of a, a misleading Thing. Maybe it's maybe it's put in there, but I certainly didn't read the fine print the first time I was in it. Now I now I have my money go to a, just a, a separate bank account savings. I don't mess around with their four hundred one k. Wow, that's yeah. a slap in the face. So you 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 yeah, got to be so vested with them after five years. Five years to get your money back out of that four hundred one k. That's all, including their or, money. Or, or that five years mark, they take back every single thing they contributed to your four hundred one k, and you can leave with just your money. Now I left with just my money, which from went from six thousand dollars to three thousand dollars. Wait, 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 James. Wait, 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 wait. But you, you still with? Okay, okay. So, wait. At the five year mark, if you still with the company, and you quit. Yep. <laughs> New cyber wins. Fatality. You, you can only you, before you, your five year mark. You could take only your money and not the money that the only company your invested money. in you. Correct. Well, that's... Correct. Everything, every single thing that they contributed to your four hundred one k, they are going to take back for, for themselves, and you can have only the money that you contributed to the four hundred one k. Well, that's that's horrible. So, so if, if wait. On, so in order if, to get the full, in order to get the full vested amount, they they have to fire you. You have to quit, or retire obviously or um or claim a hardship now in my quit in my case uh, okay so my case not, i quit no, for wait, two wait, months wait wait wait, wait 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 so you can quit and get the full vested amount that's that's what no you no say. no you no and i'm i'm sorry i may maybe i misled right so you you can you can you can you're only going to get the money they contributed if you stay beyond five years end of story so if you stay five year at the five year mark, when you leave, you can take everything. Okay. But if you quit before the five year mark, they remove everything they contributed. Okay, okay, okay. That that's a good way to okay. clarify it because what I was right. when, when yeah, I, I was know, listening, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm thinking at the five year mark, and you quit, you can only leave with the money. So basically, it's it's five years and a month afterwards. Then you quit. Right. Then it could be you five can years take, in a day. Right. Or five years in a day. And then you can take all the money that was vested into your 401k. Right? Right. Okay. Right. Okay. Okay. But the reason the reason I the reason I mention this is because people are coming fresh out of school and they're new drivers. They don't even know if they want to do this job. But they've been, you know, told, hey, we offer 401k and if you're signing up for it, then you might want to be aware of what actually 401k 401k entails. Because, you know, I don't know what the percent we know. We all know that the, the percentage of drivers not making it past their per, first year is pretty high. So, you know, that's a, you're just kind of throwing money out the window if you don't if you don't know what's going on with that 401k. So. OK, OK. Wow. 401k, guys. Warner. <laughs> better. Yeah. Better read that fine print. Yeah. All right, so James. Right, yeah, that's fine, Brent. So James, man, three years with Warner so far, but within that three years, it's it's been a it's been a little touch and go for you. A couple of accidents oh, yeah. and stuff like that. Right. What you what, what you got to say? What what happened? You you already mentioned the fact well, that you was in one accident. What's 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 the well, other ones? Okay, so we are we already you know you smack I smacked the mirror back in. And the reason I now I smacked out the smacked the mirror on another trailer, trying to help another driver. It wasn't even my load. I was trying to move. I was just trying to move a trailer out of his way at a Warner yard. That's what I get for for 
you know, for trying to help someone. And I, you know, it's clearly my fault. And I smacked the mirror trying to, trying to get, you know, make room for someone else to get a trailer out. But, you know, you just tell them, Hey, I broke my mirror. I can't, I can't haul my next load because I just took out my mirror. So, you know, that's obviously a uh, safety violation on you. So that's owner considers that as an accident, you know, same as, an accident on a highway with another car. They don't. They, there's to, to them. They don't care. It's not. It's it's virtually the same, as far as they're concerned. It's an accident. So, I, I did that one. Obviously, my fault. And then uh, the next time I was uh, about I don't know a few months after that, maybe two, three months, maybe I don't know. Time goes fast out here. I was hit by a, a drunk driver, and I was just sitting at a uh, construction site. You know how they got the police blocking the road and the construction vehicles are there and they got the little man with the with the sign saying stop and this was at night and uh, I heard now the only lane is I so single lane and I'm perfectly stopped and the, the only thing the thing that is next to me is the emergency shoulder and the the concrete barrier and all I heard was a huge noise of a car smashing into that concrete barrier beside me as it went by me now I didn't think it hit me at first because all I heard was the the, the smashing of the car against the, the barrier but apparently i had a kenworth at that time and it and on your foot on your foot uh step as you step into the trunk it's usually got this metal covering and i guess his door grazed that and kind of bent it in it was so trivial that you know warner didn't even care too much about it they're like yeah they didn't even fix it there wasn't really nothing to fix you'd have to maybe push it back out or something but you know, so that happened, but I stopped and then the police went after the guy because he tried to keep going. He tried to run after after that happened. So they chased him down. But uh, obviously that's not my fault. And uh, just something that happens out on the road, I guess. But And then the uh, the other time, I believe I was headed, in, I was in Kansas and I was in a double, in the left hand lane of a double lane exit, exiting the highway. And this I call them a rock truck. It's a it's a day cab, and it's got those big those tall haulers, and they're usually full of rock or sand or whatever. Anyway, he uh, he was gonna miss his exit, and he just he just came right over, man. And he was going so fast that he he, he smashed through the side of my mirror, side of my truck, tore up the the uh, the trailer, uh, the reefer trailer. Didn't take out the actual reefer unit. That uh, was good. Smashed out my mirror, ripped off my hood mirrors, dented my cabin. So. You know, that was all that was all on him. The company reviewed the video and yeah, I wasn't found to be at fault in, on any of that, but uh they didn't even like I said, they didn't even call me into safety. They they reviewed the video and that was it. You know, I never even went to the company normally if you have a hard break or a critical event, no matter what it is, usually they'll call you in, but in neither of those cases did Warner ever even call me into safety. They just reviewed the video. So uh so that's why I say her her story is a little strange, you know, uh, because I've had much more, you know, traumatic events happen that that didn't that that didn't, that didn't that didn't cause a termination, you know. But you know, of course, you know that U-turn is what did it for her, you know. Yeah, you know, I don't unless it's the cop telling you, you you're not doing a U-turn, you know. The incident or accident with the drunk driver, you you were stopped in a construction zone, like you said. Uh, did the car run into you from the back, or where where was the point no, of contact? I don't know, because I never seen the car coming. I was just sitting there, you know, looking at the flashing lights in front of my face. You know how they blind you at night, and the the uh, the uh, the guy with the stops holding the stop sign. What I think has happened is that the driver was about to run into me and then jetted off to the left and then that's when he smashed in along the whole concrete barrier and then grazed my truck and then just kept tried tried to keep going and that's when you know they chased him because there was a cop that you know the cops were sitting right there luckily they were up to the right uh of of my truck where they uh when he came blasting through there but yeah i'm sure it scared the living hell out of the the signman that was standing in front of my truck wow all right so we we did touch on the u-turn policy but let's circle back around to that so again we we kind of pretty much figured that that would did her in but there is there is a policy in place and i'm assuming it's in the handbook that uh u-turns at warner is a one and done situation 
yeah, that that is that is probably uh, explained to you um, so many times throughout throughout your time at Warner. Uh, so you'll you'll go through. Well, I can't speak for everyone because everyone won't have the same experience. But I went through the Roadmaster Warner School. Warner oh, Warner oh, owns the Roadmaster School training program. So I went through that. I think that probably was mentioned to be several several times just in that that school alone while I was just trying to get my CDL. And then you go to company orientation, corporate orientation, they constantly mention it to you. I, I bet it's been told to me, you know, 15 times, you know, during that, during that time that I've been in orientation, I've gone through orientation at one or twice because after the, after I was sideswiped by that truck, I left for about two months. I was like, man, I'm, I'm about done with this. And then, uh, you know, I went home and started working my old job and I was like, yeah, screw this. This, uh, this sucks. <laughs> I kind of was missing my truck and I, I went back to Warner. Uh, it was just, e- the Warner made it really easy for me to come back. I, they, in fact, they, this is, uh, and this is a good thing in, in Warner's favor because it sent me sound that I'm talking down about Warner, but Warner never even removed me off the books. Like I came back after quitting and it wasn't, you know, it was, it wasn't more than three weeks later that I got half of my vacation pay because, or whatever it was, because I had been gone. Like they still paid me for vacation time, even though I was, you know, had quit. So they didn't even have to do that. They they had paid me for that. So that was really cool. But yeah, they made it really simple and easy for me to come back because I, I didn't have anything wrong with my license or anything like that. So yeah, it was just a, yeah, an easy process. <laughs> Striker wins. Fatality. How thick is those handbooks? Because I, I speak on that as well. A lot of the new drivers, when they get into these trucking companies, they, they don't read the handbook. How how thick is those handbook? And I'm sure that some of the policies that are considered one and done are in those handbooks. Do you agree? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's it's not an exceptionally large, you know, thick book. I would I would say it's about a, you know maybe a quarter inch or something like that. It's uh you know a, a lot of Warner's rules are the same rules for regular trucks. You know, just basic laws for you know the rest of the world. But yeah, I mean, most people they get their handbooks, they get their you know their hazmat books and stuff, and they throw them in the bag or they throw them in the cabinet, and that's the last time they ever see them. They don't they don't read it. You know, and then, you know, people think, and I, th- I think we ought to get on that too. Um, people think that they're not going to find out, like when you do a U turn or something like that. And as I mentioned in these, these trucks, Warner just updated their camera systems in these trucks. And these trucks are not only is the camera there, the, it is GPS. So, you know, you do something weird like a U turn or whatever, and the, the computer recognizes it, you know, it'll tell on you, especially with that camera system. Like it, it runs. You run a, a red a red light or a uh, stop sign, it's going to send a message to to fleet that you uh, as a critical event that you did that. You know, we'll we'll touch on that camera system in a hot second because I'm not a fan of uh, the cameras at all. But uh, but again, yeah. with the policies that is that are in play with Warner, they mm-hmm. like I said, guys should read the handbook so they can make oh, themselves aware of of what's there's been a lot of strange things been going on as of late we just now getting up out of the silly season and everything and we're noticed and we're noticing in some some areas which is now become hot spots for for truck drivers being that warner is like a mega carrier and we you guys go go all over the states what do warner uh, have in place for you guys as far as safety for for you guys that's going into hot spot areas do they do they require you to park at a certain area or a certain place or like take memphis for example we we know how hot memphis is so if if you guys go do do they do they have you guys to stay in Memphis, knowing that Memphis is a, is a hot spot for crime? What, what do they have in yeah, place well, for you guys? Well, as far as Memphis goes, um, especially West Memphis, uh, Warner has a, 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 a terminal there. Uh, so they recently expanded that terminal, making it larger. So 
that terminal is really good. So that, I mean, you can save Haven there anytime you want. And there's been several times that I've been looking on my phone where I've been put into situations where I'm like, okay, I need to find a Warner drop yard. Cause I've, I've went and slept at Warner drop yards. I've slept at, you know, obviously, you know, terminals, but you know, so you, in Warner's policies, I mean, you can go to these drop yards or terminals as safe havens. That's their, that's their purpose, obviously. But, you know, I mean, there's there's times where you're not you're simply not going to be by one, and you know, I I have certainly slept on my my share of an uh, you know a few on ramps because there is no other choice. There's that's it, you know. There's no choice. I have nowhere else I can go, uh, you know, despite policy. Uh, example, um, there's no there's no parking in Atlanta at eight o'clock at night. There's no parking in Atlanta. Okay, so. You know, uh, they give me a load, you know, with uh, three hours on my clock or whatever left in there, you know, just outside of Atlanta and, and tell me to go pick this up when I'm already at a safe haven. And uh, I'm like, well, you know, this is a live load. So, you know, I'm going to, and I'm literally sent this over the tablet. You know, this is a live load. I'm going to be sleeping on an on ramp. You know that, right? And they're like, oh, well, you can't find safe. Not, not in Atlanta. Not at, <laughs> not, not at eight o'clock at night. Hell, at five o'clock in the afternoon, you can't find parking. So, you know, not around Atlanta. So it's it's difficult, you know, like they put sometimes you're put in these bad situations. And luckily, in that instance, I was at the shipper actually let me sleep on site, which is a rare occasion, to be honest. So not many places let you do that. So but yeah, I mean, so that's my biggest beef with a lot of uh, a lot of, of, of Warner's dispatch, because, you know, they 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 don't care. <laughs> okay, Warner's mono is Warner cares. But uh, I think they have a great sense of humor in that because they, they you get sent into situations where you know they don't care, you know they don't care how you're going to find parking, they don't care what you do. That's your responsibility. You figure it out. They don't. They don't. That's nuts. You know they could care less about that. They care about that load, but that that's about it. You better figure the rest out on your own. Now, if you're a teamer, these things don't matter so much because you know you got another guy that can drive. But you know, for a solo driver, it's a big deal. Man. Well, James, man, again, thank you for coming on, man. Let's talk about the camera system because you said they just updated the camera system to 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 an eye spy type of deal. Is it inward facing, outward facing? What, how how these systems is set no. up? So, the way this camera works is it's watching. Now, I'll, I'll explain this this camera in you know in, in, into its its true reality. So, this camera is not listening to what's going on in the truck. There's no audio on it. It's an outward facing camera only. It's always recording, uh, but most specifically, it's going to record when there's a critical event, such as you hard brake or you uh, you tilt the load or, you know, tilt alarm goes off, or, you know, something like that. Um, you know, you're, it's going to it's going to send a message for, for that to be reviewed. But they updated this camera to where it used to be. <clears throat> sorry, excuse me. Um, it used to be that that camera really wasn't going to tell on you unless those things happened, unless you had a critical event or you, you know, you hit, you know, you, you set off a tilt alarm or something like that, which in, when I was a new driver, I had did all of those things because I'm a new driver. I thought I knew how to drive the truck without setting off a bunch of bills, bells and whistles, but uh, that's a thing you actually have to learn. So, you know, when it, when, so now the new camera is kind of updated where it reads a lot more uh, things that are going on. So, like I said, if you run that red light, it, it's going to tell on you. Like, if you run a stop sign, it's going to tell on you. Now, the old one didn't used to do that. And I know that because it happened to me when I couldn't see a, a stop sign, and I went through this small town, and I, it never it never registered. But that's why I was surprised, as I said in one of my, in my uh, comment of that lady's video, is that, you know, I was surprised by it because I was talking to a guy who was there at safety, and I'm like, he's like, oh, yeah, I'm here because I ran a stop sign. I'm like, how did they know you ran a stop sign? Well, the camera told on you. I'm like, wow, those cameras are, are updated quite <laughs> are, are doing more than what I used to, to think that they did. So, you know, now now these new systems, new cameras are uh, much more advanced with what's going on. Now, when it comes to speed, now in, in 60, like I'm in a 60 mile an hour zone, I'm doing 65 or whatever. It, it doesn't send off a, a critical event message that you're doing something wrong for speed. It just seems to do it for uh, for for more more dangerous things such as you know uh, collision alarms. That's another one it'll it'll do for you, and it'll bug the the system the uh, the safety system on the truck will bug, and sometimes it'll uh, it'll hard. So this is why you don't use 
cruise control in winter, as you probably, as you quite already know, I'm sure. But the system will bug. So I've had it when I was in my first year. I learned this quite quickly that it would it would bug on shadows at night. So if I was going to under a bridge, it just started breaking, hard breaking on me. Automatically set off an alarm. There's nothing in front of me. Got called into safety. They're like, well, what happened here? I'm like, you tell me. You see the same thing. They're like, why are you breaking? I'm not breaking. The truck's breaking on its own. I had to mash the gas to override it. So, you know, that's why you, you don't use that cruise control in winter. Especially, you know, roads were in good conditions. I don't know why it freaked out. But, again, it just does sometimes. So, Or if there's a construction zone, it set it off. Construction zones, it, it, it reads something that's too close to the truck, and it'll set off a critical event. So there's lots of reasons why it can go off, but... Most of them are your fault. (laughs) Kano wins. Fatality. So you agree with me that that the camera is always on and not with the recruiters. Always watching you. Not with the recruiters that say, hey. It only comes on during a critical event. No, no, no. That's not true anymore. And that may have been true, but that's not the way it works now because it's now reading, you know, like I said, it's now telling on you. You know, it, there's no way for that, for, you know, for it to know that you ran a stop sign unless it sees that you read, that ran the stop sign. You know, I mean, there's lots of times where the, that's why I said speed, it doesn't tell on you for speed because there's lots of times when you're passing an on-ramp It'll say 35 miles an hour, but you're not getting off on the on-ramp. You're just driving, you know, 70, you know, 75, which this truck can't even do 75. But it'll say, you know, it'll be telling me to slow down because I'm supposed to be doing 35 when I'm really not in that lane, you know. So, you know, it doesn't tell on you for speed, but it'll tell on you for for those things, yes. All right. So it all is right. always on. All right. James, man, awesome conversation, bro. I really, I really appreciate you stepping up in the building, sitting down with me and everything, man. I really, I really enjoyed the conversation. Yeah, it was nice talking to you. Um, I recently, again, I, I recently subscribed to you, but to be honest, I don't watch a lot of truck driving videos because I do this all day. So <laughs> I don't want to watch someone else do it most of the time. But I, I do want to say that, I do want to say that, you know, uh, I don't want people to get the wrong idea. I think Warner is a great place for new drivers to start. but you have to remember that, you know, when you get out of school, even though you, you haven't even gone to Warner for, for orientation, you now have a CDL. You are now a professional driver. So always think professionally. And that's what I try to tell myself when I'm doing something out on the road before I get frustrated and do something stupid. Stay professional and think professionally. Don't do stupid things like U-turns, you know? Uh, in too deep like Omar. Make me want to track you down and hit the track hawk with the crowbar. I knew we wouldn't go far, like we ran out of ethanol. Now your nosy ass mama want to get involved. When I met you, you was on the couch with the plastic. She need an Emmy. Bitch so dramatic. Now your baggage got me on edge like jagged. Fucking up my homes. Look, Patrick. You swift to jump shift like a chief. Been crying on my line like Therese. But it ain't all you, it's me. Blame it on the things I went through.